welcome back fellow developers and coding enthusiasts today we have an another exciting project that will put your html css and javascript skill to the next level get ready to dive into the world of design and functionality as we create a stunning neomorphic stopwatch as a part of our 50 projects in 50 days series all right folks before we start coding Let's quickly go over what a neomorphic stopwatch is. The neomorphism is a design trend that combines the principle of neomorphism and flat design, creating a soft and realistic appearance. So today we will be applying this aesthetic to a classic stopwatch, giving it a sleek and modern look. Exciting! Let's get started. So guys as you can see our neomorphic stopwatch will have a circular shape with subtle shadow and highlights to mimic a physical stopwatch like this. So when we click to start it will start a counting. When we click to stop it will stop. So it will display the elapsed time and we will have buttons for start, stop and reset. So this button is for reset. So guys let's get started first with HTML. We will start by setting up the HTML structure of our neomorphic stopwatch. Then we will create a container with a circular shape and various elements to display the time and button of controls. So let's get started with our HTML code. Okay guys, so we have created our HTML file and this is how it looks in a browser. We have two buttons to start and reset. These are the timings. We will update it using the JavaScript. So let's get understand our HTML code first. So in our HTML file, the given HTML code represents a basic web page structure that includes a various elements like div, buttons, and script tag, link tag, head tag, and HTML tags. So, talking about the first line, the doc type, this is the document type declaration and specifies that the HTML version being used is as a HTML5. Another one is our HTML language tag. We have given the attribute lang is equal to en. This is the opening tag for the HTML document and includes the lang attribute which specifies the language of the document in our case is english this is our head tag this is the head section of the html documents and contains the meta information and external dependency so what is the meta information like meta care set utf8 so this is this one and the meta viewport these are the meta information so what is meta care set utf8 this meta tag set the character encoding of the document to UTF-8 which support the wide range of characters. And the meta viewport is a tag sets the viewport properties allowing the web page to the responsive and adapt the different devices width. This is our external CSS link. To include the external CSS file name as a style.css to style the HTML elements in our document. And this is our third party library so we are using this font awesome for our buttons to give the icons so that is why we are using this third party library and the another one is our title tag this is the title of the web page that will be displayed in the browser title bar or tab then we have 
our main part that that is body part this is the body section of the html document and contains the visible content of the web page then we have wrapper for our content and in our wrapper we have a class watch that we will update dynamically when the user clicks on the play button and this is our controls like play and reset button this is our script tag which we have given on the bottom of our html so that's it guys for the html file so let's move toward the css one so guys now that we have the structure in a place it's time to style our pneumorphic stopwatch using css we will use box shadows gradient and rounded borders to create a pneumorphic effect by carefully manipulating these properties we can achieve a realistic and visually appealing design so let's get started to code our css Wow, guys, we have created our CSS file and looks how it represents in our browser. It looking very pretty using the neomorphic design. But we will first understand what we have written in our CSS file to achieve this design. So guys, let's get started to understand our CSS file. So guys, in our CSS code, we have here, we see different instruction that tells the website how to look so let's break it down step by step we will understand the important some important functionality in our css code and some css properties that you may understand when i will explain to you so the first line this at the rate import and url this code starts by importing a special font called poppins from the internet that is we are importing it from google this font will be used for the text on our website talking about the elements there are instruction that to apply all elements on the website it sets the spacing size of the element so that the everything looks neat and organized that is using our asterisk symbol if you are regularly following my videos you will observe that we will use this asterisk symbols and this code to every time when we create our new project so talking about the body section there are code also has a instruction specifically for the body of the website it says the size position and background color of the website it also chooses the poppins font for the text then we have a wrapper class inside the body there is a container called wrapper that holds other elements the code sets its size shape and appearance making it look rounded with a shadow effect then we have our watch class so within the wrapper there is a part called watch that sets the appearance of a specific element it gives it a round shape a shadow effect and large font size then 
we have a controls the buttons of play and reset this code also create another element called controls it sets its size and appearance positioning with the buttons evenly spaced then we have our buttons now let's talk about buttons the code defines the style for the buttons it sets their size shape and appearance giving them a round shape a shadow effect and pointing hand cursor the buttons also change their appearance when clicked getting a different shadow effect and slightly smaller size lastly we have our animations so the code adds special instruction when the changes happens the watch and the buttons have animation that make them appear to move or transform smoothly when there is a change this make the website look interactive and lively so when we click on the button then this animation will work and that's it for the css code guys i hope it helps to make website look beautiful and attractive it's like giving a website a special outfit we hope you enjoy learning about css and how it works so for this CSS if you have any question or confusion feel free to leave a comment below let's get move toward the javascript now wow guys look at our numorphic stopwatch is taking shape but it's not functional yet see it will not work that's where javascript come into play we will add the logic to handle the start stop reset and functionality we will create a javascript function that controls the behavior of our stopwatch when the start button is clicked we will initiate a timer and update the display with the elapsed time the stop button will pause the timer and reset button will bring the stopwatch back into its initial state so guys let's get started to code our javascript file And there we have it guys our numorphic stopwatch is completed we have successfully combined html css and javascript to create a beautiful and functional time keeping tool now it's your turn to experiment and customize it to fit your own style and preferences but before we go ahead we will first understand our javascript file so let's get started so guys in this code we have here we start by getting a necessary elements from our html documents we have a watch element and play buttons to reset buttons these are the elements we will get the necessary element then next we declare some variables like start time we will store the time when we start the stopwatch elapsed time will keep track of the time that has 
passed and timer interval will hold the interval for updating the stopwatch display then we also have a function called format time this is the function that makes milliseconds as the input and formats it into a hhmmss format representing hours minute and seconds so these are the hour and this is minutes and this is seconds so this we will convert it to first to string and get the start two letters from that string then we have a start timer function this function is responsible for starting the stopwatch it stores the current time as a start time by subtracting the elapsed time from the current time so this is the store the start time in the start time variable then we will update the stopwatch every 100 millisecond this is the code responsible to update in our code we are using the javascript timer that is set interval and these are the interval like 100 millisecond then we will add an active class to watch and play button this is the class to manipulate our dom then we have a stop timer function is used to stop the stopwatch it clears the interval that updates the stopwatch display and removes the active class from the watch and play button elements then finally we have the reset timer function. This reset the stopwatch to its initial state. It stops that the timer of its running by calling the stop timer function. Then it reset the elapsed time to zero and update the display to show in a string like zero zero column zero zero column and zero zero. If the play button was the pause state, it changes it back to the play state. Then we have the button click listener so this click listener this click event listener to the play and reset button or when the play button is clicked we check its current state if it's in a play state we call the timer function change the button icon to pause and start the timer if it's in a pause state then we call the stop timer function and change the button icon back to play when the reset button is clicked we call the reset timer function which stops the timer of its running reset the elapsed time and update to display so guys that's it and that's how we create a stopwatch using javascript we have learned how to start stop reset the timer if you have any question about this javascript code or any suggestion please let us know in the comment below and that's all for today's guys for today's episode of 50 projects in 50 days we hope you enjoy building this captivating pneumorphic stopwatch as much as we did remember one thing practice is a key to mastery so keep coding and exploring new projects don't forget to like this video it will really help me to motivate and give you a nice content of creating a awesome javascript projects please subscribe to our new channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our upcoming projects until next time happy coding guys bye